we want to solve the initial value problem using the method of substitution. The given differential equation is not a Bernoulli equation or a homogeneous equation. We need to perform a more general substitution. Analyzing the differential equation, the biggest issue is the square root of the quantity x squared plus y squared. Let's try letting v equal x squared plus y squared. If v equals x squared plus y squared, then v prime or dv dx is equal to 2x plus 2y times y prime. To differentiate y squared with respect to x, notice we apply the chain rule. And this is actually good news. Looking at the left side of the differential equation, we have y y prime plus x. If we multiply by two, it'll be equal to v prime, which means for the first step, we'll multiply both sides by two. And let's also write the square root using a rational exponent. This gives us two y y prime plus two x equals two times the quantity x squared plus y squared to the one half power. And now I perform substitution. The left side is now v prime. The right side is two v to the one half. And now we have a separable differential equation. Let's write v prime as dv dx. Let's also multiply both sides by v to the power of negative one half. This gives us v to the negative one half dv dx equals two. Next, we will write the differential equation in differential form, or we can think of multiplying both sides by dx, which gives us v to the negative one half dv equals two dx. And now we integrate both sides of the equation. On the left, integrating with respect to v, we have v to the one half divided by one half, or two v to the one half. We'll include the constant on the right equals two x plus a constant, let's let the constant be c sub one. And now we need to solve for v. Let's first multiply both sides by one half, which gives us v to the one half equals x plus one half c sub one. Let's let one half c sub one be equal to c. And now we square both sides of the equation. Simplifying, we now know that v is equal to the square of x plus c. Now we write the equation back in terms of x and y by replacing v with x squared plus y squared. Next, we subtract x squared on both sides. And now we take the square root of both sides of the equation to solve for y. Algebraically, we do have a plus or minus on the right. This gives us y is equal to plus or minus the square root of the difference of the square of x plus c and x squared. Now remember the solution must be a function that satisfies the differential equation as well as the initial condition. So here we have two solutions. We're going to take the positive solution because we know in our case, when x is zero, the y value must be positive. So to find the particular solution we use the general solution y equals the positive square root of the difference of x plus c squared and x squared. And now we can determine c using the initial condition y of zero equals four. We substitute zero for x and four for y, which gives us four is equal to the square root of, if x is zero, we just have c squared. But again, we're looking for the positive or principal square root, and therefore our c is positive c equals positive four which means in our case, the particular solution is y equals the positive or principal square root of the difference of x plus four squared and x squared. Now I should mention we can simplify the radicand if we want. The square of x plus four is x squared plus eight x plus 16, and then we have minus x squared. We can also write the particular solution as y equals the principal square root of just eight x plus 16. So either form should be acceptable. Let's verify this graphically. In black, we have the graph of a particular solution. Notice it is a function. It passes nicely through the slope field and passes to the point zero comma four given by the initial condition. I hope you found this helpful.